Allahu Ekber Allahu Ekber Allahu Ekber Allahu Ekber Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah Eşhedü en la ilahe أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Elhamdülillah, elhamdülillah, innelhamdülillah, nahmeduhu ve nesta'inuhu ve nestağfiruhu. Ve na'udhu billahi min şururi enfusina ve min seyyiyyati amalina. Men yehdihillahu fela mudillele ve men yudlil fela hadiyele. Neşhedü en la ilahe illallahu vahdehu la şerike leh. Ve neşhedü enne seyyidena Muhammeden abduhu ve habibuhu ve rasuluhu. السابق إلى الأنام نوره ورحمة للعالمين ظهوره صلى الله تعالى وعلى آله وأصحابه وأحفاده وأولاده وأتباعه أجمعين أما بعد فيا عباد الله أوسيكم ونفسي العاصي بتقوى الله وطاعته قال الله تعالى في محكم كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد جاءكم رسول من أنفسكم عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف الرحيم فإن تولوا فقل حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم. All praises due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. We thank Him. We seek His help and forgiveness. We also seek refuge in Him against the evils of our deeds. Who our Allah guides. Nobody can mislead him. And whoever he leaves and goes astray, no one will not find guidance. I testify that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and final messenger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow peace and blessings upon this noble prophet, his family, his companions and his followers. Ameen. 
my respected brothers, sisters, and beloved children. We will continue, inshallah, talking about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as we are currently experiencing, as we are currently having the month of Rabi'ul Awwal, where Rasul alayhi was born. 1495 years ago, in this month, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam blessed the earth by his birth. Peace and blessings upon him. Inshallah, this khutbah will be continuation of the previous khutbah of the last week, inshallah. My respected brothers and sisters, we've been through, we've been going through very challenging, very taxing times. The second lockdown has just started yesterday. Today is the second day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for every single one of us. The community also has been devastated with the news came from Europe. It is so sad that a lot of heinous attacks took place since then. As violence erupted in such European cities as Paris, Nice and Vienna. We condemn such acts of violence against innocent people, whether committed by Muslim or non-Muslims. We hope that learning more about his character and his manners will bring us closer to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet of Rahmah, the Prophet of mercy and compassion, and understand his life and mission better. While in the first part of our khutbah, my respected brothers and sisters, we will talk about the trials of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how he responded to enmity. In the second part, we will talk about how we can apply this example of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in our lives, especially for our children. Once the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam began to preach Islam publicly, his few followers quickly found that merely professing faith meant facing ruthless torture or and even execution. Men from Meccan nobility, like Abu Bakr radiallahu an, were beaten unconscious in the streets while slaves like Bilal radiallahu an was shackled and left to scorch in the midday desert sun. As for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself, the abuse he suffered from the people of Quraysh was brutal. They spared no opportunity to demonize him divorced his daughters, and exiled and starved his entire clan for three years. As for, as for physical assault, Uqba bin Abi Mu'ayt strangled him from behind when he prayed in public. Abu Jahl ordered camel intestines to be dumped over him while he prostrated. He made sajda. Utayba bin Abi Lahab spat at him and others beat him unconscious. In response, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam persevered and he was completely non-violent in the face of repeated provocations of the Quraysh. These provocations increased in severity as the Quraysh grew frustrated at their failure to stop his preaching. He had an eager audience of new Muslims that grew steadily despite all the efforts to instill fear in the new Muslim community. My respected brothers and sisters, a concerted effort was made by the Quraysh who viewed the Muslims as rebellious criminals for abandoning the pagan religion of their forefathers to prevent anyone they could from listening to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam paint by the visible suffering of his followers and unable to protect them from harm. The Prophet ﷺ was grieved at not being able to convince the community at large, among whom were many of his own clan members. He still continued to invite people, choosing to appeal to their sense of morality and reason. Seen through the lens of a tribal society, any one of the provocations of Quraysh would have been sufficient cause for war between the tribes involved. 
Yet, we see unprecedented individual and collective self-control, conviction, and perseverance that can only be realized with great spiritual and moral foresight. Ultimately, the Prophet ﷺ fled the persecution by migrating with his companions to Medina, but not before leaving the pages of history a matchless legacy of forgiveness and dignified dealings with one's enemies. Despite the Quran affirming that the insults of Quraysh tightened his chest with pain, the Prophet ﷺ never stooped to retaliation in kind. When Quraysh became even more vicious, the Prophet ﷺ prayed, O oh Allah, send years, send years upon them like the seven years of Yusuf ﷺ. As a result, a famine overtook them like that of Yusuf's time ﷺ forcing people to eat highs and carcasses to the point that they hallucinated seeing, seeing smoke. Abu Sufyan came to the Prophet wasallam and said, Ya Muhammad, you order people to obey Allah and keep good relations with their kin. The people of your tribe are dying because of the famine. So please pray Allah for them. Ultimately, the Prophet ﷺ received verses from Surah Al-Dukhan and he supplicated for them. A cloud quickly appeared and poured forth rain in abundance and he supplicated for them again when they subsequently complained of the excessive rain. But once they were quenched and scared, they soon relapsed into rejection and rebellion. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spent 10 days in Ta'if after speaking to its leaders, calling its people to Islam until mobs gathered to drive him out. They made two rows and forced him through them while they hurled obscenities and pelted stones until blood ran down his blessed legs. And Zayd ibn Haritha, who accompanied him, who protected him, his head was gashed. When Tufail ibn Amr al dawsi first visited Mecca, he was fearful of being bewitched by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and even placed cotton in his ears to block it while circling the Kaaba, circulating the Kaaba. Nevertheless, he embraced Islam shortly thereafter. When he carried this message back to his people, However, they shunned him and refused. Abu Huraira reports that Tufail ibn Amr then traveled back to the Prophet sallallahu and told him what happened. And he said, O Messenger of Allah, those has defied your call. So invoke Allah against them. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O Allah, guide those and bring them forth as Muslims. Nearly a decade later, Tufail ibn Amr radiallahu an migrated with 80 families, now Muslims, to Medina. Ala inna ahsan al kalam, wa ablagh al nizam, kalam Allah al malik al aziz al alam, kama qal Allah ta'ala wa tabarak fi al kalam, wa iza quri al Quran fastami'ula, wa ansitu la alakum turhamun, wa qal al nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at ta'ibu min al dhambi kama la dhambala, wa staghfiruhu, innahu ghafur rahim. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. My respected brothers and sisters, now let's talk about the activities we can do with our children to commemorate the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and learn about his example. This is the month of Rabiul Awwal, blessed month, where Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born. And of course we need to commemorate, we need to learn and understand Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his example and apply it into our lives and teach it to our children for them, for them for them to apply into their lives as well. Through these examples, we can organize a week, a week long family activity on the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Firstly, 
These are piece of advice or suggestions for my brothers and sisters who listen to my khutbah, who listen to my Friday sermon. This can be regarded either suggestion or advice, piece of advice. You can practice at your, uh, in your family um, as it is the blessed month of Rabiul Awwal. For example, brothers and sisters, firstly, we can get a map of Arabia at home or how our children to draw or trace one from an atlas. Then we note down the different places the Prophet Sallallahu traveled to from Mecca or Medina. We can talk about his journey to Ta'if, trace his journey from Mecca to Ta'if. We can research each of his journeys and present them to our family as part of a family discussion or meeting. Secondly, we can wake up every day before dawn, before the start of the Fajr prayer, to worship Allah through Salat, Dua, or Dhikr, like the Prophet Sallallahu did. In fact, if we were able to, we can wake up in the time to do the night prayers of the Hajjud, and then finish with the morning prayer to demonstrate to our children how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed at night and before dawn. While looking at the sky, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would read the last portion of Surah Ali Imran, thinking and contemplating about the universe and the Creator. This is an excellent way to become closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala at a time when concentration is at its peak. Minds are clear and daily worries and when Allah is very close to us. Once Fajr began, the Prophet Sallallahu would pray and then chat with people who stayed behind him for some time at the mosque. Get the whole family to get up in the time to perform this special prayer on a Saturday or Sunday. Encourage them to the best of their ability to stay awake to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. Thirdly, an activity I could suggest you that be done, that can be done at bedtime. After the kids come home from school or any other time set aside for learning. The first step of loving and learning from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his life is to know about him and what made him great. You can buy children's books about his life or even listen to them on tape while you are in the car on your way to or from school. Maybe each person in the family can choose their story to tell. This will allow some research and reading as well. The Prophet Sallallahu used to sleep in a unique way and would say a dua or two before sleep. Maybe as a token of our appreciation and love, we can sleep one night the way he slept. Some Muslims do sleep that way all the time, although it is not a requirement of our faith. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam slept on his right side with his right hand under his right cheek. He used to make wudu before going to bed also. He used to recite one or two du'as before sleeping and recite a few short portions of the Qur'an. If you wish to do this activity, you can memorize the du'as, understand their meaning, and make copies of them for everyone in the family. Fourthly, the Prophet Sallallahu my respected brothers and sisters, understood the importance of fun and games. He played with children. He would raise with his wife and he would swim and wrestle as well. He would joke with his companions. He played with and loved children. Muslims must not forget this aspect of his life. To follow his example, we can set aside a time during the week when we play games with our children, like raising, telling jokes and reading hadith to our family on this topic. Last but not least, we can learn and teach our children about the table manners of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We can learn what kind of food he liked as an extra activity. We can make a list of those items once the whole family is together with a selection of their favorite food. We can have one person to talk about it 
and remind everyone of his table manners. A young person may be the best one to do so. For instance, our Prophet ﷺ advised Muslims to eat in a way that after eating, the stomach is only one-third full. We also should wash our hands before and after eating, reciting Bismillah at the beginning, meaning in the name of Allah, and other duas before we begin, as well as eat with our right hands. These are just some of the ways the Prophet ﷺ did, did when he ate. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the insight to learn more from the example of our, uh, our Prophet ﷺ, humility and compassion of our Prophet ﷺ, as well as from the examples of the past MBA, the messengers, the prophets, peace and bless blessings of Allah be upon them all. Amen. الحمد لله حمد الكاملين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين تعظيما لنبي وتكريما لصفي فقال عز وجل من قائل مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ارضعني الأربعة الخلفاء سيدنا أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي ذو الصدق والوفاء وبقية العشرة المبشرة وآل بيت المصطفى وعن الأنصار والمهاجرين والتابعين إلى يوم الجزاء اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك قريب مجيب الدعوات برحمتك يا رحم الراحمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون أقم الصلاة إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنع